Hey everyone, geophysicist Stefan Burns here. We have had some significant developments. Check out this incredible plasma filament that blasted off the sun today, just a few hours ago, reaching nearly the length of the sun itself. In fact, I think it stretched beyond the diameter of the sun, blasting off south of the ecliptic plane, meaning it's not earth directed, but showing that there is incredible potential with the sun at this moment in time because Based on my observations, this is the biggest plasma filament launch that we have yet seen in Solar Cycle 25. A massive electric current propagating off from the sun, almost feeling its way out like it has intelligence and consciousness. I don't know where that's being directed, but it's certainly reaching out somewhere, sending a stronger electric field further out. And of course, remember, we are all immersed in the heliosphere of the sun, that larger voltage gradient, which governs a lot, especially as it relates to our biology, research into cellular voltage gradients. On top of that, we are back in a burst of high speed solar wind with the velocity now up to over 650 kilometers per second. We reached a peak of over 700 kilometers per second back on the 13th of July, early in the morning universal time. The solar wind strength decreased to about normal and the velocity was trending lower until now it's ramped back up. We reached values of about 11 and right now we're sitting at 10. So the solar wind is two times stronger than normal. The density is below one particle per cubic centimeter, which is quite low. And the solar wind velocity is high at about 700 kilometers per second once more, meaning the earthquake watch has not come to an end, even though we've already had a magnitude 6.7 strike Indonesia in the Banda Sea Trench and also a magnitude six plus earthquake strike just south of Panama. So some significant developments have been occurring there. If we look at our 131 angstrom view, we see that the sun is quite active. There are more than 140 sunspots spread out across the sun at this moment in time. All of them are kind of crackling subtly with energy, some a bit more than others, but none of them are totally quiet and they have a good spread across the entire earth facing side of the sun. So they're not clustered really heavily just in one area. In fact, where they are clustered the most right now is earth center and direct, as we can see right here with this complex sunspot cluster there. Not the biggest sunspots we've ever seen, but still significant. And remember everyone, a very important component of the entire Earth geophysical system is the ionosphere, and it is strengthened and plasmified by this sort of solar activity where you just have constant low grade flaring, basically tiny little explosions all across the sun, increasing the energetic charge of the uppermost atmosphere, which acts like a capacitor with Earth's surface and therefore you see higher magnitude earthquakes when Earth's ionosphere reaches a greater charge like we have right now. We can see sunspots in 4K. This sunspot right there making a little bit of a ghoulish face is exactly Earth center and direct right now at this moment in time. Keep in mind, these sunspots are literally magnetic vortices that spiral out and they are scale equivalent to the Earth. Often, actually, they're much larger than the Earth. This one right there, that magnetic vortex is about the same size as the Earth. And so if that lines up with the planet, it establishes a strong magnetic field connection directly to us, allowing for the exchange of information and energy. And who else is seeing Jack Skellington in the sun right now? This is almost like a preview for Halloween soon to come when the veil is thin. Keep in mind right now in July, the veil is not thin. It is thick and that is going to change as we enter into the upcoming equinox season and these more spiritual energies rise to an even greater degree. But right now in summer, the sun is very strong and this is the face that is showing us right now, which I find very interesting. And also very interesting are the Schumann resonances at this moment in time. You see that we had quite a lot of activity here off to the left. This is the 14th of July in Tomsk, Russia with UTC plus seven time. And so this is shifted ahead of most people on the planet. If you're on, for example, the East Coast of the United States, 
that's 11 hours ahead. So you have to take off 11 hours to get your time. But we see some interesting energies there. These are non-resonant energies propagating right around 10 hertz or so. We see, of course, our 20 hertz power line harmonic cutting across there. Another frequency there of about 16 hertz. This spectrogram goes from zero to 40 hertz. We're measuring the vertical electric field. And this is our power legend there. So blue is low power. If we go into the hotter colors, we get higher power. We see a lot of earth burst in here. So these zones there where we get this increase of these resonant modes, earth's naturally resonant harmonic energies, the Schumann resonances at 7.8 hertz, 14 hertz, 20, 26, 33, 39 they have increased. And so this may be speaking to the fact that there is greater earthquake activity ahead of us and that this magnitude 6.7 that occurred today is not the only high magnitude earthquake that is yet to come. If we look at our USGS map, I have this set to show all magnitude 6 earthquakes going back to the beginning of 2025. And you'll notice that there are some areas that have not experienced anything major, namely the west coast of North America, stretching through British Columbia up to Alaska. Our first magnitude 6 plus earthquake is there in a dock that is a 6.2 off the Aleutian Islands. Some very powerful geology there, but we've just often been seeing very little high magnitude seismic energy release along the San Andreas Fault and also going through the Cascadia subduction zone, both of which have potential for magnitude 8 in California and magnitude 9 off the coast of Oregon and Washington and Vancouver Island. So that is quite significant. But the ring of fire, as you can see, is quite active. So it has dissipated a lot of its slip, or at least that is what it's indicating to us at this moment in time, though, of course, what exactly is happening in the deep earth is definitely a mystery. Seems there are some significant changes happening below the crust in the mantle and down to the core itself, as I'm sure you are well aware of. And we also, for example, have this activity here along the mid ocean ridge in the Atlantic going past Iceland and the hotspot, but nothing big in this Gockel caldera zone one of the largest supervolcanoes on our planet situated right now next to the magnetic pole in the northern hemisphere. So that could give our magnetic field a wobble if it decided to have a VEI-8 eruption. The chance of that, extremely low. But is it a complete non-possibility? It's not. Here we have Hawaii. We've had 28 episodes of eruptions now at Hawaii going back to December of 2024. It has been very, very active, showing that there is new flow and energy coming out of the mantle, expressing itself at some of its regular hot spots. And we see that Africa is a pretty stable continental plate. So not much activity in Africa, though you can go up here to the GNC just on the border of the African plate. You'll see this 6.2 there, north of Crete, 6.0 to the east of Crete, and also don't forget that 6.2 that gave Istanbul a big shake. So a lot has been happening, a lot more is going to continue happening in this year. And as I'm filming this video, don't forget that we have Saturn in Neptune nearly exactly conjunct today, July 14th. They are just 13 arc minutes apart from each other. You get 60 arc minutes per degree. They will finally go conjunct in February of 2026 from a geocentric perspective. But in general, they are creating a strong heliocentric planetary geometry. You'll notice that that has not clicked in to exact yet. That is a little bit later on this year. And of course, we have our inner planets and our outer planets all in special configurations. The really big planetary geometry right now is this formation here with Pluto, sextile to Neptune and Saturn. That's a 60 degree angle. Uranus then also applying the same sextile to Saturn and Neptune from the other side. Uranus and Pluto trying together within one degree and soon we will have Mars sweep into and activate that kite formation right 
here and you can see Mars behind the Earth, then you have Saturn and Neptune and then there's Pluto, Saturn, Uranus. So a very powerful planetary geometry that is unfolding at this moment in time. Some astrologers are calling this revolutionary on a millennial time scale. So let that sink in. There is quite a lot of historic evidence supporting that. That is it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Wishing all of you well. Don't forget we have a sale going on at earthevolution.com store. You can use the code planets for 5% off. Thank you all so much. I'll see you soon.